Welcome back to the Black Letter Podcast. We set out to create an entertaining and exciting podcast about law and business, and I think we've done it. Black Letter, the name, comes from the Gothic typeset that was originally used in the Gutenberg Press. Over time, Black Letter became the only font that English law books were printed in. Everything else was printed in regular type. It made it harder for kind of the common person to understand what the English law books said. Black Letter came to represent something that was law, that was set in stone, that was sort of old and a well-settled fundamental principle of law. We're here to demystify Black Letter law. We're here to demystify things that happen in business and law and where those two meet. And I hope you have fun listening. Welcome back to Black Letter Podcast. I'm Tom Dunlap, your host. Today with me, I have John Whitbeck. John is the CEO and founder of a company called StratPoly. StratPoly is a political consulting company. They run campaigns for candidates. They've got uh, people running for Senate, for Congress, and they manage political parties and PACs as well. We're going to hear more from John about that. Um, John, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Tom. Good to be here. You're sort of famous, at least in the DC region. You were the well, to be fair, you were the chair of a state party of a really important state. Virginia is one of those states that uh, has a lot of juice in Congress and in the Senate and in kind of the national political scene. Governors go on to become senators and uh, you know, potentially presidential runs, things like that. So you were the chair of the Virginia Republican Party at a time that was challenging for the party in terms of fundraising and in terms of what was going on in the country. Tell us a little bit about your background, if you would. Yeah, sure. So I've been in politics, uh, local, state, and federal for about almost 20 years. So okay. we, we live in Loudoun County, which is right in the heart of the D.C. metro area parts of uh, Virginia. And you know, I started out in party politics as the, what's called the 10th Congressional District Chairman under Frank Wolf, who was in office for 34 years sure, and was sort of his political guy, and then uh, oversaw the, the district and party operations for Barbara Comstock when she was elected to Congress. Right. And from there, uh, I was elected to the state party, uh, which also puts you as a member of the Republican National Committee. So gotcha. um, I've overseen elections, everything from the Trump uh, 2016, all the way down to school board elections at the local level. So we've been involved in just about everything for, uh, I was about almost four years. In your own right, you ran as a candidate. Okay. And, uh, and I, I know you didn't win that race because there was a, a, a countrywide thing going on. Right. But tell me a little bit about that race and your experience there. You've worked on campaigns, but in this case, you ran as a principal candidate. And I will just share that I, I found this out. John raised more money than anybody has ever raised for that, uh, that candidacy in the history of, of Virginia. So, John, tell me a little bit about that. What was that? Well, we uh, unfortunately, our campaign was a victim of the blue wave. The Democrats are turning out their voters in historic levels. And it's been going on for three years now in Virginia. In fact, it's right. actually going on nationwide. And Republicans are uh, you know, writing their own epitaph if they don't realize how fired up the Democrat side right. is right now. And so you know, we did. We raised a ton of money. Uh, my background in fundraising is extensive because I was state party chairman. That's basically what you are. You're a professional fundraiser gotcha. uh, for a nonprofit, essentially. And money is the lifeblood of politics. Uh, and so you've got to have someone who can fundraise. So I took those skills at the, to the local. I ran for a local office and we raised uh, over a million dollars for this office, which has never been done before. And it was because we did that kind of relentless, um, all day long, pounding away, getting it. And we were able to help a lot of the other campaigns that actually won. Uh, because our fundraising and our infrastructure was so strong. So strong. So that, and I mean, I know a lot of Senate campaigns and congressional campaigns don't even reach that level of fundraising on yeah, a national basis. No. Yeah. Uh, so so that brings up another point. So just for our viewers, Black Letter is not partisan. Um, Black Letter's production staff and crew, this is the disclaimer I have to do because I'm a lawyer, attorneys at DBL, Democrats, Republicans, independents, libertarians, all walks of life, John happens to be just very well known and the CEO of a company that we're interviewing today and is a Republican. So on that point- And, and we have nonpartisan clients as well. I mean, we, we have- Okay, uh, yeah. So tell me uh, about that. There, there are uh, uh, offices in Virginia, for example, where you don't declare by party and we, we have clients who are, uh, nice. who are in those offices. So, but we don't represent any Democrats. I'm a lawyer like you, as you know, and I've represented you know, from all walks of life. But in, in politics, you really have to take a position sure. on what side you're on. And, and we're on, we're on the right side. 
Sure. <laughs> so God forbid I ever get directly involved in politics <laughs> as a candidate. That would be the worst thing ever to happen to me. Um, and I'd probably be the oh, worst candidate I ever. Doubt it. Well, your wife would be a great candidate, by the yeah, way. My <laughs> wife would be a great candidate for the Democratic Party, as you well know. <laughs> well, she probably I'd would vote be. for. Tell me a little bit about Strat Poly. So I really don't know a whole lot about what I, I know. Strat Poly, your company, is a general consultant or a GC. When I hear GC as a lawyer, I think general counsel. Right. What is a GC or general consultant to a campaign? How does that work? So the way a campaign works is a candidate uh, does a lot of preparation before they even announce that they're running. Okay. And it's not usually at the local level, although like my campaign, for example, um, we didn't have a general consultant because you don't need one at the local level for the most part. Um, but at the state and federal level, most campaigns will have a general consultant. And that's somebody who helps you drive your message, set your campaign up, helps you get your fundraising going, okay. helps you get your messaging going, uh, helps you with vendors, like who's going to be your digital consultant if you're going to have one, who's going to do your mail for you, who's going to do, who's going to be your campaign manager sometimes. Gotcha. Uh, okay. So these are, these are people with a lot of experience in political campaigns that take their candidates forward and help them do everything there is to know about campaigns. And that's what we do as well. Okay. So, so a general consultant is kind of like a general counsel. You give general advice right. to the campaign overall. You're not specifically in fundraising or specifically in media or digital or marketing. You're advising all of those things. Strategy, I guess. Is that, that what That's you... right. Okay. Now, with, with Stroud Pauly, where we're different is uh, I've dealt with literally hundreds of consultants. I've dealt with them at all levels, and I, I've learned a lot from all of them. And we so have, these strategic consultants is what you're talking about. Right. Hundreds so general those. consultants and, and, and one, media consultants, uh, consultants that do digital uh, advertising, uh, even you know door knocking. Uh, we, we've dealt with all of them when I was state party chairman and, and as a candidate and beyond. Okay. And where Strat, Strat Poly is different is we want to be a one-stop shop. Okay. The most precious resource to a campaign besides time is money. Right. So if you can save your candidate money on things like door knocking, digital media, I everything, see. radio, TV, everything, you're doing them a favor and you're allowing them to sustain and do more with less. And so what Strat Poly does is we put, put together a package for our clients where we say, okay, we're going to take a retainer uh, from you to do general consulting, but we're also going to offer the service of digital. If you want to do digital advertising through us, we can do that for you. If you want to do uh, general uh, operations like grassroots operations, setting up your door knocking program, making sure that you have the, the campaign apparatus with your staff, we can do that for you. If you need to do mail uh, uh, as part of your campaign, we can do that for you. TV uh, advertising, radio. Everything that comes with running a campaign, we can do. And we put together our staff okay. is designed solely for the purpose of being this one-stop shop for clients at every level of, of government. So, so just so I understand, so instead of having to go to one person, see, sometimes campaigns will have a GC, a general consultant, and then have a separate fundraiser and a separate digital and media person right. and a separate campaign finance compliance person. Right. And there's a cost to that. The cost is you as the candidate or somebody has to coordinate all of those different moving parts. Right. And they're all different people in their own little solo shops. Right. The idea behind Strat Poly is you aggregate those services in one place. That's right. One point of contact right. so that they manage all of the, you, you manage all of those services right. in one spot. A including the fundraising. As we talked about earlier, that's one of the skills that we bring to the table is, is, a, is, a, is an excellent fundraising operation. And, and with that, so many times you're having to hire a fundraising consultant, right. a digital consultant, a general consultant, a campaign manager, a political director, and all your staff. So there's a lot to this campaign uh, stuff. What we're, what we're essentially is the CEO of your campaign. You hire us to manage everything about it, and we try to find ways to save you money and partner with those right. that are out there. For example, there are some candidates who are comfortable with their digital consultant or their general consultant. Well, fine. We'll handle your fundraising for you and partner with your, your general consultants. Gotcha. In fact, many of our clients are a combination of services with a partnership with other general consultants. So we have great relationships with other consultants and it's a great way to do business because you're talking about learning so much from each other. You're partnering, you're referring each other business. So you can coordinate their existing, if they have an existing fundraiser and digital person, Correct. You can add campaign finance and, and coordinate them generally right. together. You right. can manage that. So you, you replace the candidate having to do that, right. which seems to be a value add. Now, so, so for me, and you, you know, John, we've known each other a long time. I'm an IP lawyer. I literally didn't know that. It sounds to me like running a campaign is like running a business. 
Very much like, so. Like you, you want right. to run for office, you're basically forming a new company, hiring a CEO, a COO, a, fina- a CFO, a CMO. Right. You're hire- you have to hire a C-suite and then you need staff. I mean, right. it sounds insane. Revenue. I actually never really thought Employment. about it until yeah, literally so. just now we're talking about it. You've got all these issues. Can I dig into that a little bit with sure. you? So the first, the first question I have is, and I still don't really understand this process. I know it exists. I know the words. I went to law school. But uh, the primary process, campaign right. primaries, caucuses, um, delegates, I've heard of whipping the delegates. I picture chains, leather harnesses, but I assume it's different. No. It's yes. not that. Okay. Correct. So, can, so tell me about that process. What is, what, how do you whip, how do you whip yeah. these, these delegates? So one of the things Strat Poly specifically markets for and does for candidates is specializing in your primary, your convention, your caucus, your nominating process okay. for a candidate. So a lot of times people don't realize that in order to compete in the general election, you got to get the nomination. And a lot of campaigns right. make the mistake of looking past uh, to the next game and not looking at the game in front of them, which is the nominating process. So they're and, looking at their challenger in the other party, right. or not they, the challengers in their own party. That's right. Or they take for granted. They think they're going to win the primary right. easily. What people don't understand is the primary process, especially in the Republican Party, of all, uh, more so than any other organization, there are really, really strict rules and really aggressive rules. And these huh. campaign... Uh, general consultants a lot of times don't understand how canvases and caucuses and conventions, how, how much work has to go into them. So we do a lot of that work for campaigns. Sometimes people just hire us just to do through the primary process because we understand conventions. So what is a canvas? Let me go through the, the yeah, different yeah, types. So, I don't really understand. Yeah, no, no, and, yeah. and most people, and most candidates yeah. don't, and most consultants don't. And so treat me like a candidate. I'm going to treat you like a candidate. So if you're coming to but see- But I'm not running for anything, no. just so we're clear. <laughs> well, yeah. If you come to see me and you're running uh, in, in a, in a uh, uh, let's say a Virginia election, we'll just use the uh, examples I know best. We're going to first talk about how we're going to get the nomination. Okay. And in Virginia, there's a whole menu of options, but most states are very similar. So first of all, there's a state-run primary. Okay. That's where the state board of elections, and you vote at your normal polling place where you, where you always would, mm-hmm. the state board of elections runs the primary. And you show up and you vote, and it's a whole different uh, set of circumstances for a candidate. You got to raise more money, you got to knock more doors, you got to treat it very differently. There's also what we call party run processes, and there's different examples of that. Does Virginia do both, or do they do Virginia one? Does or the both. Other? Okay. Virginia does both. Okay. Both. Virginia allows the party itself to select what it's going to do. If a party selects the state run process, oh. then it automatically defaults to that. And you got to wait to the next cycle before you can change that. Interesting. Right. Now, some states, it's required that you do, first you do a caucus or a convention, and then you do a state-run primary. But in Virginia, for example, it's always a choice of the party what they're going to do. Okay. So once you select a party-run process, you've eliminated the state board of elections from having any any say. Can I ask or, a question about that? Sure. Is that um, like you're running an election in the 10th district for Congress and then the 6th district for Congress? Yes. I know you have candidates in both, but- uh, does the party pick by district or is yes. it statewide? Yeah. In fact, it, it goes all the way down to the local level. So, oh, so they can say, we're going to primary caucus this one, but yes. state board of elections this one. Absolutely. And yeah. then they have to make strategic decisions about that. Absolutely. So in the presidential year, so, so right now in Virginia, the Democrats are holding a state-run primary on Super Tuesday. Okay. The Republicans are holding a state convention in, in May outside of Super Tuesday, later than Super Tuesday. In each congressional district, some of them are doing conventions, some are doing state-run primaries, some are doing what are called canvases. And at the local level, last year in 2019, and, and with state delegates, state senate, uh, all of them had all of those districts had different ones too. So it's very wow. the state party has to manage all of this, and it's a lot of work. And that's why at Strat Poly we understand this better you used than to most because I used to do all day long. <laughs> and, and our you know you I, you know you've met our our, our new uh, one of our counsel, Chris Marston. He was a yeah. general counsel. Of the Republican Party of Virginia, Chris is an expert in this stuff. Okay, and it is not uh, a small thing to say you're an expert in these things because uh, a lot of rules that go into them. So, can I just ask then the diff- What's the? I understand a primary is where the party is picking delegates. That's a convention. That's a convention. A, a state-run primary is you show up at your normal polling place and people vote for you. Just the general just public like votes. So that's a primary. Yeah. So convention is. Just people who are selected by their local parties as delegates exactly. vote for the candidate to choose whether or not they're the candidate running. Yeah. And then what's a canvas? A canvas is like a state-run primary in that you show up at a location and you vote. 
okay. but it's usually a smaller uh, a smaller uh, number of locations. So, okay. for example, in 2014, I ran the largest canvas in the history of Virginia. Okay. We had 13 locations throughout the 10th congressional district, and we had about uh, when well, no, I'm sorry, we had 10 locations in the district. 13,000 people showed up to vote in this uh, this party canvas, and it's we just set up these 10. Uh, locations and each of those locations received voters on a Saturday from you know ten till one. Okay, which is different than you know a Tuesday when normally we have state-run primaries. Have, have, have there. So that's a canvas is more like a state-run primary, but it's more controlled because it's run by the party. So, so John, a canvas is a way for the state party to essentially run their own primary instead it, of having a convention it is and and it's and it's very difficult because you have ballot security issues that you got to overcome you have people who uh, you have credentialing are they eligible to vote in oh, the canvas because this isn't state run it's That's right. party run it's, so you it's have to volunteers and staff doing this for what the state board would normally do. it's very difficult and it's very expensive it had never been done before until 2014 at the congressional level it'd be done all the time at the at the local level but never at the congressional did it level did work out well we did great it? i mean we 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 were able to get so much data from that. We were able to give the, the, the nominee, uh, former Congresswoman Barbara Comstock, 13,000 new email addresses to her email list. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And we, so, there, we oh, raised, so there's some other advantages too. Exactly. See, in Virginia, we don't register by party. So if you live in a state that doesn't register by party, these types of party nominating processes are really one of the few ways you have to identify who your right. voters are. Right. So, um, and then if you, you know, if you compare a canvas to a convention, a convention, like you said, you elect delegates in each locality, and those delegates go and vote for the candidate at the convention. So, okay. So it's a very different process. So gathering those delegates together is something else you do. Right. So so in Strat Poly, what we do- That's is, called whipping. Whipping is making them show up to the convention. Okay. What you're doing it, 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 you know, for a convention- Where does it, does that come from whip, like making people do something? At the federal level, they call it the majority minority whip, which is people whip votes. It's yeah. just a, you know, a long time tradition, you know. And then you have what are called caucuses or mass meetings, which is okay. where they're kind of like conventions, but you don't have to be a delegate okay. to, to, to come and vote at it. You, you set one date, one location, and anybody who's eligible to vote comes and shows up to vote for, to nominate the particular candidate. And if you don't understand these processes, you can get railroaded. I've seen so many people who got killed in the general election win the nomination because they understand conventions and caucuses better than the alleged front runner. So question about that. So can you as a candidate early on get a consultant like yourself to work with the party to pick the process Absolutely. to benefit? Absolutely. So, so, so that's another big benefit of working with the general consultant is yeah. we would rather do a canvas to benefit your candidate right. in that primary process right. as opposed to another candidate of the same party in that right. primary process. Right. And our partners at Stratpoly are former staff and chairs of states. So what we do is we have seen every single fight you can have. We know all the rules and all the ins and outs. So if you hire us before the selection of the nominating process, right. we can help steer you how you can influence the decision for that particular process. So Strat Poly's got national partners in state all over the country. Right. Uh, par former party chairs, former candidates, former right. elected officials, right. current elected officials. True. Um, yep. So uh, tell me then... What I'm really, I think a lot of people would like to know is how do you get money from people as a political candidate? How do you, how do you say, well, I'm going to run for office, especially in the primaries. I may not win the primary and even get to run for office, right? Um, but give me a whole bunch of money. I need a million. I'm John Whitbeck. I need a million dollars and you're, you're going to get nothing for it and it's not tax deductible. Right. How do you get somebody to give you money? <laughs> right. That to me, as a lawyer, I ask people for money to do things that are sort of ephemeral. I'm going to write right. some letters and make some calls. And it's, Right. Use my law school brain. You're asking for money on the hope that something will happen in the future, and no, no, like, no guarantee, no guarantee. Yeah, that's and, right. And no. So how do you do that? Well, first of all, uh, every candidate needs to know that the most important thing, besides wanting to run for office and having a good message and being an honest person with integrity and all the good things that you would want to bring to the table, you got to raise money. Right. If you can't raise money, you don't have to raise the most money. You just have to raise enough money okay. to, to compete. So there are, there are barriers to entry in politics, just like there are in business. You okay. can't compete as a law firm unless you have lawyers who are good, obviously. But if those lawyers are not generating any revenue, then you're not going to succeed. If they can't get clients, no matter how good they are, that's right. doesn't matter. That's right. And there's only so much consultants can do to help a candidate raise money. Okay. It's the candidate's job to raise the money. 
It's the staff and the consultant's job to do the mechanics of campaigning after that. There are email fundraising uh, that the consultants do that candidates really aren't involved in. And there's at the margins, there's a little bit of fundraising that some consultants will do and push and, and collect and follow up. For the most part, it is a candidate that has to make the calls. Candidate has to make the calls. Now, do you train the candidates on how to make those calls? Absolutely. Absolutely. How, does, how does that work? So the first thing I do with candidates is I, as I show, I show them sort of a diagram. Okay. Fundraising is like a series of rings. The first ring of, of the series is your inner circle, your network. If a campaign uh, has a candidate without its own personal network, you're dead on arrival. No way that you can run for office unless you can raise money from your own personal network. Whether it's friends, family, people you worked with, people that you've made acquaintances through, cl former clients, current clients, whatever, got to have a personal network because that's your seed money. Okay. You're going to come right out of the gate, especially if you have a contested primary, and you're having a really hard time going to donors beyond that inner circle and having them give to you. The next level of the rings, if you will, is party activists, party donors, people who are hardcore Republicans or Democrats. These are people that give to candidates because they believe in the cause. Okay. These are people that you can always count on to give money in every election. So people that have expressed themselves uh, uh, through donations, uh, people who used to be, serve in public office, people who are party leaders, people who you just know are Republicans. That's sort of the second ring. Then you go to the third. Or Democrats, if you're a Democrat. For Democrats, consult. same thing. It's, sure. it's no different. You, you got to be able to raise money. In okay. Side. Third ring is that th those groups of people that you generate. Okay. You've got to be able to generate new donors if you're a candidate. So in other words, if you go to a, a fundraiser for another campaign, or you go to a meet and greet uh, for, for, for you that, that somebody puts together at their house, or you go have a one-on-one -on -one coffee, or you speak in front of a group, you're always meeting people constantly. Those people that you touch throughout your campaign are always potential donors. And you should be working that new network that you're building. And it's an incredible amount of networking you're doing. That's all campaigning is networking at the, at the end of the day. Okay. It's networking of a different form. So that third ring is really that new network you've built. And then that fourth ring is the toughest one. That's the cold calls. That is people that have no idea who you are. They have a donor history. So that happens? It happens. And you're calling them for hours and hours and hours, trying to convince them why you should be uh, someone they invest in. Have you in. done that before? Maybe. Oh, yeah. So how, how do you find the Especially people? Especially state party chairman. That's, it's cold calls all day long. Wow. So do you, you, do you get leads for these cold calls? You do. So, so what we do at Strat Poly, for example, is, is these, this is what I would, let, let me walk you through a typical yeah, process. Please do. So, so first of all, I would explain what I just explained to the candidate. Four rings. That's right. And I would start with, we are going to sit down and we're going to work your personal network until it's, till it's, de till it's done. And it's going to be, and, and when, if we're going to call, let's say a hundred of your personal network potential donors, and we're going to get maybe 20 of them in the first pass. Then we're going to make a second pass. And now we've gotten 40 of them. And then we're going to make a third pass and a fifth pass. All the while I'm setting meetings up and calls up with that next level, which okay. is Republican activist donors. I see. People who donate to Republicans all the time or Democrats all the time. And in the case of you know, my, my, our opponents, um, that third ring of that new network comes as you go uh, throughout the campaign. I see. So you, you have a, a, an inner circle person who's like, you That's should right. talk to Bob That's right. or Cindy. That new network that you're building, we're setting up meetings with them and we're, we're making calls so with them. you guys track that and then create that's that. That's right. So that, that's about where your consultant gets you uh, 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 right out of the gate. That is, that is really the fundamental first six weeks to two months of your campaign. Your inner circle, those Republican donors, and then you start to build that network. Okay. Once you've exhausted all of that, and hopefully you're exhausting it never, but that almost never happens. You do have to co-call. We do what's called call time. Okay. And, and literally, I will sit with a candidate and I will call with them uh, people who are, are in their inner circle, who are in the second ring. So you're which, on the call talking on the call as well? No, I'm, I'm actually sitting with them, taking notes, saying, okay, call Tom Dunlap. He has a donor history of X, Y, and Z to these candidates. Give him a call. This is the ask. We get so far as to give them background information, a biography, a photograph of them. Oh, wow. So you at, pull like Facebook profiles. Absolutely. Oh, whatever that's... off their website. A lot of times it's business uh, websites that okay. we do. And we also give them a donor history. This is all the people they've donated to in the last, say, five years. It's really not current if it's more than five years. Gotcha. But, but in Virginia, for example, there's an election every year. So donor history is really easy to find. Okay. And so you can find both federal and state donor history and, and actually local history too. And we as, at Strat Poly are able to pinpoint, we know where to go to find that information. And if we don't know, 
We're experienced enough in fundraising that we can tell you what the ask is. Okay. And, and, that, and that's really the ask. Let me talk about that for a second, yeah. the ask. What's the ask? So the four best words in politics are, how can I help? Because once you've interviewed somebody and they say, or, or you meet with somebody, you have coffee with them, or you, you meet them you know, when you knock on their door, whatever, I'll support you. How can I help? You know you can make an ask at that point. Whether it's, I need your endorsement, I need your vote, or I need money from you. How can I help? Once you get that, you make the ask. And a candidate has to make an ask. You cannot beat around the bush. You must be specific. You must listen to your, your fundraising consultant who tells you, this person is a potential donor of the maximum allowed by federal law, which is 2,800. Ask for the max. 2,800 is the max. 2,800 is the max. Yeah. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a primary and then 2,800 in the general election. Huh. Uh, yeah. So candidate has to make the ask. And once So how do people give more money than $2,800? She's got me stuck. I know I was here like so-and-so gave $10,000 or $20,000. How, how can you do that? Well, at the state level in Virginia, for example, we have no limits. You could give yeah. all, all over, right? Uh, but a lot of times people will give to state parties, which uh, in a federal year can take 10,000. Oh, okay. um, a lot of times there'll be joint fundraising agreements where campaigns will, will uh, work together. Like, like, for example, when I was a chair of the state party in Virginia, we had a joint fundraising agreement with Trump for president where we would raise money from a large donor for the party and for the president. It was all going to the same effort to elect the president uh, in 2016, but we had to raise money within federal oh, law. inside the party and inside. Correct, oh, I correct. see. Because the party has a higher limit of 10,000. So who does this campaign finance compliance? Do you guys do that as well? We do. So one of the great things that we have at Strat Poly is a really strong campaign finance practice. Okay. Um, we affiliate with, with your, your law firm, Dunlop Bennett Ludwig, for campaign finance law, for litigation, for anything that comes up in the legal realm. But we also have campaign finance compliance. The quickest way for a campaign to get in trouble is to screw up their finance reports. When you declare for uh, your candidacy for public office from the local level to President of the United States, you immediately activate campaign finance laws. And in order to comply with those campaign finance laws, you've got to keep track of who your donors are, their name, their, their location, and their employer, and you have to keep the exact amount that they've given you. I see. So internally, you have to keep track of that. That's right. Report that. Is then that you have to report federal it publicly. and state? Federal and state. So you have to report to the Federal Election Commission, the FEC, if you're a federal candidate, and you have to report to the State Board of Elections of your particular state. So if you're state. running for like a state position, you don't have to report to FEC, just you to don't. the state? No, okay. just a federal. So if you're running for governor, lieutenant governor, attorney general, state senate, et cetera, you just have to report to your state, state. board of elections. And then if you're running for Congress, Senate, or, or president, president, you have to report to the, uh, or if you're a state party raising money to spend in a federal election, you got to report to the FEC. But if you're a state party raising money to spend only on state, can, do they separate that and just report? Yes. Yes. You have a federal account with a bank ah, and you have okay. a state account with a bank and you report to FEC and the State Board of Election. I got gotcha. you. And that's just, doesn't matter what party you're in, Green Party, Libertarian right. Party, all of that's that. Right. Okay. And many, many candidates at the local level can do this reporting on their own. But if you're a statewide candidate, you absolutely have to have a compliance. And, and our, our compliance team consists of all lawyers who have done this uh, for everybody up to presidential candidates. So we can handle wow. any, anything that comes okay. along. So in addition to that, we talked about canvassing, caucusing, and primaries. We talked about fundraising, and we talked about compliance. Is there anything else that you think our listeners out there in terms of how the political process works for a candidate or a party or a PAC or whatever it is, anything else they need to know? Well, let me talk really briefly about the fundamentals of a campaign. Sure. Like what does it take to form a campaign? Okay. First, you got to decide you want to run and you got to be all in. Uh, you got to have the fire in your belly. If you're going to run for office, do not run unless you're 100% sure because it is a commitment to your family and to you that uh, is gonna, it's going to hurt. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt you financially because you're not going to be able to work uh, full time at your job. Your wife or your husband is going to be picking up the slack with your family and your children and they're going to be having to be in photographs and video and all those things. And many uh, candidate spouses aren't the ones that like to be in the spotlight. Not happy about that? No. And, right. and, you know, my, you know, when I was a candidate, my wife hates politics. She didn't want anything to do with it. She didn't want to be in pictures, but she did it for me. And it was a sacrifice for her. And I, and I appreciate yeah. that. So you got to remember the impact on your family. No political office is worth sacrificing your spouse, or your family. I mean, absolutely. Right. You have to have your family on board. You can't run unless your spouse is with you. And, and, and unless your family circumstances allow it. So make sure your family situation's in order before you decide to do it. And make sure you truly want to do it. Make sure you, 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 you think you can win. And I always ask, 
uh, candidates three questions before they decide to run. Why are you running? Why can you win? And what are you going to do when you get there? If you can't answer those three questions, you shouldn't run. So why are you running? You should be able to answer that really easily in a very succinct way. Why do you think you can win? You should be able to think you have a shot at winning. If you have no chance of winning, what's the point? What are you going to do when you get there? I want to know what, where you stand. What are you going to do? Or what kind of laws are you going to try to pass? What kind of issues are you going to advocate for? What are your fundamental beliefs as a, as a Democrat, Republican, or independent that lead you to want to run? So have that message already, and then it's our job to authenticate it and, and put it out there for you. Well, and so I have a little bit of a devil's advocate question, because there have been candidates, and, and recently only because right now it's essentially the Democratic Party running against an incumbent president. Right. But there have been candidates that I've seen in the Democratic Party in the news that don't have specific platforms, that kind of lack. Certainly there are, you know, uh, Joe Biden has a detailed platform and uh, Elizabeth Warren has a detailed platform, but, but there are candidates with no platforms, public, like press, press groups that right. maybe even favor the candidates and said, well, they don't really have a position on X or Y. Yep. How important is it to have, so you, you, the three questions, right? Why? Um, what are you going to do when you get there? Was the, were the why are you running? Why? Yeah. Why do you think you can win? Why can you what win? Are you do you and what there? do you do when you get there? Yeah. Oh, it seems like a lot of candidates can't answer that. What am I going to do when I get there? A lot right. of them are like, I'm running because I'm right and I believe in a cause right. kind of vaguely. Um, but what are you going to do when you get there? Seems to be a question that's unanswered. Uh, how detailed does somebody's answer to that question have to be? Do they have to be like, well, I'm this on social security and I'm that on you know, whatever the issues, right. the detailed political issues. Right. In the Twitter era, in the era of 30 second sound bites, you don't have to be as detailed as you used to be. A lot of times people don't have time for a wonkish discussion about policy, right. but you got to be able to answer the question. Well, where do you stand on the second amendment? Well, what do you stand on healthcare? Where do you stand on taxes? Where do right. you stand on transportation? All those issues you have to have an answer for if, if you're running for, now, if you're running for state Senate, that's a different set of issues than US Senate. Right. But you got to be able to answer those questions. You're still going to be asked questions though, that aren't even relevant Absolutely. to anything you could legislate. Well, especially <laughs> right now, all politics is not local anymore. All politics is national. It's been wow. completely nationalized. And so you got to be able to answer those, those tough questions all the way up those to big, abortion, big immigration, all those things, even if you're running at the local level now. Okay. Um, but once you can answer those three questions you decide to run, next question is, can you raise money? If you can raise money. So the fundamentals are you got to be able to put your fundraising together. Then you want to make sure your staff is, is solid. When you're starting a business, what do you want? You want good people that you can hire to work for you. It's the same thing. Never underestimate the importance of hardworking people that you're getting at a good cost uh, that you're not overpaying for, but you're not underpaying either. You, know, you get what you pay for. Right. And so you st never underestimate staffing. Your campaign manager is important. Your, your political director and your staff and everybody out there door knocking represents you. Can you find people campaign managers? Yeah, so at Stroud Poly, we have we ha uh, most of our staff are former campaign managers and people okay. that have run campaigns. So they have a network of people all over the country that they can draw from. Not to mention our relationships with the state parties and the RNC. We know a lot of the folks out there that work on campaigns that we can bring in, and we can generate new ones. I mean, there's always a high school kid in your local uh, town that wants to work on campaigns that you can find, and we the can help you find that. The too. cost. So. Uh, and I assume that there are other companies like Strat Poly or the, on the Democrat side, on the Republican side. I mean, are there other companies there that, okay. There are. And, and, we, and we, we pride ourselves in having great relationships with those companies. Okay. We have competitors, sure. But uh, the, the bigger issue is, you know, we're all in this together. We're all, we're all in this because we love politics. We, we believe in our cause, whatever that right or left. You're in this not just to make money. You're in it because you really believe in the cause. And everybody has a story of how they got into fighting for the cause. Um, okay. You know, and then when, then once you get your staff and you get your fundraising down, then you start looking at how am I going to get my message out? If you have the budget to get your message out and you got to do a campaign budget, make sure you, you, you put together, you start looking at how am I going to get my message out? In some markets, you're going to do television. Okay. Uh, television's effective. Uh, in more rural markets or more conservative markets, radio is still effective. Wow. Uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in younger markets and more, more urban settings, uh, a Hulu ad is going to be more effective than a TV ad or a radio ad. Um, digital ads, people are getting their news now more than ever from social media. Right. So what, where are you going to put your ads now? I think your budget needs to be as, as important as mail it, it is now digital, I think. I think digital has to be a strong part of your campaign. But mail, unfortunately, has to exist. It's very expensive. It's very time-consuming. 
Um, it, it will be your biggest expense as a campaign, but you got to do mail. You can't get away from it. I hope someday that that mail is 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 less important than it is now. Right. But it's still very important. But I believe that campaigns are the aggregate of everything. It's how many doors you knock. It's how much money you raise. It's how much mail you do. It's how much digital you do, and how effective all of it is. Gotcha. So you got to do a little bit of everything. And we at Strat Poly translate that into how do we make you win through the aggregate of all these different ways of of getting your message out. So if I'm a candidate and I'm watching the Black Letter podcast and you, and whether you're a Democrat or Republican or Libertarian, just generally as a candidate, what are the three, if we could boil these, these 30 or 40 things we talked about, what are the three major things as a candidate um, that, that I should take away from the show? You got to be able to raise money. Raise money. You got to have a good, authentic message. Message. And you got to have the right people working for you. Okay. So money, people, and message. That's right. Those Absolutely. are the three takeaways uh, today. And I, I think, I mean, I think you've covered everything I can, that I wanted to know. I know more now than I did certainly an hour yeah. ago about uh, campaigns and finance and gosh, just learned a lot. And yeah. So John, so three big takeaways again are, uh, you've got to have the right people, you've got to have the right message, and you've got to be able to raise money. That's right. All right. So you heard that. John Whitbeck, former Republican uh, Party Chair, Republican Party of Virginia Chair, and Republican National Committee member. Is that what it was? Absolutely. That's right. And candidate for office. And now the CEO, the principal of Strat Poly, political consulting firm, uh, joined us today. Thank you, John. That's all for today's episode of Black Letter. Thanks again for listening. Join us next time when we talk about more Black Letter issues in creative ways. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and Google Play so you never miss an episode. And to catch us on video, check out our website at blackletterstudios.com. 